I'm good. Whenever you are. The okay. sherbet is still f***ing good. Mm. Oh, you know what? <laughs> don't, don't start. <laughs> Dude, you... I needed to turn off the f***ing fan. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast, the show dedicated to talking about all the poggers things in life, like music, content creation, and video games, with a heavy focus on the first-person shooter, Escape from Tarkov. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam, an Escape from Tarkov content creator. Wait, we're back. We're back on heavy focus from Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> I don't know. I just when I don't, my brain just fills it in. Whatever happens, happens. Okay. Well, listen. Less Webster's, focus today. Webster's dictionary defines a mistake as an error in action calculation opinion or judgment caused by poor reasoning carelessness insufficient knowledge etc uh, and then the second definition here is accidentally forgetting to post both the audio oh. and or video versions of the, of the podcast until fucking one God hour dang before it. dude literally I, like somebody somebody tweeted, tweeted. Me today and was like it was like, oh, what, you know, uh. you guys doing the podcast or whatever? I'm like, oh, dude, it's today. Like, what do you mean? And then I was like, wait a minute. Like, didn't Bro. we do one after DJ Peach Combo? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. And then I pulled and, it up and was like, my bad. Our and bad. one where we very specifically asked for, like, call-ins and, like, <laughs> response from the community. Yeah. I will take 100% responsibility for that. I was taking 100%. I was supposed to do it. I do it normally on Mondays or Tuesdays. We try to get it out at the latest on Tuesday. And Tuesdays was Twitch Rivals. And I was stressed. And I went live super early. And I totally forgot until Wednesday. And I was already live Wednesday morning. And I was like... And it takes forever, dude. The first thing I did this morning was like edit it. And it takes like an hour to export. And two hours to upload. And then like 45 minutes to process. You know what I mean? It's such an endeavor. So that... Oh. Norm see normally you write the summary and then you send it to me yeah with and the then I usually i'll come up with like a title kind of based on the summary sometimes it usually like is sort of matches whatever the video is yeah. they're like close enough yeah um but uh but i was thinking like it usually takes like an hour or two <laughs> to to upload the video for him chances are he's uploading the video and i'm like I won't know what to title this video because I don't remember what the fuck we talked about. I have to listen. I have to listen to the two-hour podcast. Yeah. I'm like, do I listen to it and then come up with a title, or do I just wait until he sends me the summary? Fucking day it was, dude. What Yikes. a day. Yikes! That was uh, that was Papa oh. Jesse's mistake there. And then dude. I just got a goddamn text message from my wife. You guys look alike. <laughs> There's always somebody in chat that's like, are you guys twins? And yep. then today it's one minute it's into your the podcast. Wife. Bing! You guys look like, fuck. Oh. oh, dude. And last week I was editing it. We were both wearing red too. And I was like, oh my God. Calculate. I mean, you call me beforehand Calculate. and you're like, yeah. hey man, what are you wearing? I'm like, today mm -hmm. I'm going to be wearing black. I'm going to have my eyeliner on. And you're like, same. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Speaking of Twitch rivals, the segue that you mentioned 45 minutes ago. Mm. Um, mm, that was a thing. Yeah, it was a thing. <laughs> I I was not happy with my performance. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, dude. I am such a... I am such a... Like, the, the, the person you... You'd see, like, in the... Oh, actually, you know what? It's the perfect fucking example. You watch Band of Brothers... I, I have a long time ago, yeah. Do you remember? I think it was Lieutenant Dyke. Okay. He was the guy that was like, uh, I'm going to be over here. Uh, okay. You guys take it, take care of everything here. And then he would just peace out. And then everybody was like, where the fuck is Dyke? Like, nobody <laughs> knew. He was just completely useless. That's how I felt. I felt oh. like just completely, utterly like, uh, you guys, you just do your, I'm going to be over here. And um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so it was... I, I cannot play with a fucking team, dude. Yeah, it's it's rough. It there see, I went into it basically knowing that there was only one way that was gonna go. You know what I mean? Cause it's like I do not play reserve often at all. I kinda know the call outs, but I get confused. I don't know how to make flanks. I don't know when I get pushed, when I, when it gets stressful, I don't know what to do and it gets weird. And then Geeks was the same way. We were playing the day before. He's like, dude, I really don't play reserve often at all. And then we were trying to get in it. Neither of us, including you at this point now, no three of us, 
play trios very often. Me and Geeks both play duos a lot, but there really is a big difference between duos and trios because it's like, it adds another variable on whose voice is that now. When you hear a voice, you just know it's your teammate. So it's, if I'm upstairs, then you know. But if mm -hmm. Geek says, I'm upstairs, I have to be like, well, where's Veritas? Or vice versa. If you're like, I'm downstairs, where are you guys? It, there, there's one extra level to go through. And said, well, there's so many yeah. additional layers because you hear, you're going to hear like, let's say you hear a, a gaggle of footsteps. It's yep. like, was that one person making three footsteps or was it three people making one footstep or yep. was it, and if it's three people, then that means, or, or was it two people making one and then another guy made two? Yep. Like, so and then so, if that's the case, where, where is Jesse? Okay. Geeks, where are you? And then I then have to know what your fucking call out is, which I don't know any of the call outs. I'm like, yeah. where are you? You're like, oh, I'm over by a black pawn. I'm like, <laughs> I can wait 120 seconds for chat to tell me where the fuck that is. Oh or, my you know, God. Yeah. So like, I just, I just, feel, I literally was just frozen there. And I'm like, yeah. It really, it adding trios, adding a third person really is like so many additional layers of communication, of talking, of what to know and what to hear. Me and Geeks don't play reserve often. And so it's just like everything kept compounding. Now, in just a normal Tarkov raid, you know what I mean? Like like if we had decided to go three mans, nobody wants to be the guy that team kills. But how much 10x that pressure is on a tournament. You got 10,000 people watching the Rivals channel. You got thousands of people watching the Russian broadcast. You've got thousands of people between all the streamers. It's like so much more. So then all of us are playing even additionally more passive because of that. So I kind of knew you, you were selected as a captain. You asked me to play and I was so pumped to play, but I just went into it with no expectations because it really feels like the only two ways to go about it are like spend two weeks grinding out strategies, call outs, like really go hard at it or just take it for what it is. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's and such I don't a, have the cycles to fucking study. Like, I just don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, like, it's res, reserve is one of the maps that has it's it's like I don't this call outable because every building is branded. You know what I mean? But yeah. it takes time to learn them all. A lot of those buildings have four floors and a basement. There's an entire underground. And then like I've I've said this about geeks before and I love it. But like geeks is the king of yelling a call out that you've never heard before but you instantly know what it is he's like they're over there on boobs and you're like i think that means they're right there you know what i mean the two hills and you're just like it's so they're at harry potter and you're like i guess I'm, I'm assuming that's like the brick building and it's so funny but then you add all those type of call outs you're smarter than me because i hear like, boobs and i'm like there's literally a grassy hill over there there's a grassy <laughs> hill over there and there's grassy hills over there I'm, what am I gonna say? Yes. <laughs> Instead, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, well, no. Um, if you, if the, the, the comms tower is the north, or the, yeah. you know, the, 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 the fucking dish, you know, if that's north, then I'm on the opposite side. But like to the right, if you're facing, like, <laughs> I'm bro, sitting here trying to draw you a fucking picture, bro. And that's when I get when it gets super. When people are like, I'm in the north end. I'm like, bro, I got nothing. I don't know which way's north. Like, especially because. The reserve map, the map that's provided is flipped upside down. Like the, yeah. the map that they that BSG posted is like south is the top. And you're just like, this is so confusing. So it just and then all of those things. So it's not to say that it was unfairly stacked against us at all. It just that's why going into it, I knew it was going to just be like more just like funny. And then in addition to bad, it's all, not stacked against you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then in addition to all those things, we are in lobbies with the best players in North America. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. I got killed by Cloaksy, Landmark, Desmond, who Desmond. I was so glad to be killed by Desmond. And then I survived the fourth raid. Um but we didn't get the whole like survive the last Yeah, the thing. one raid we so survived was for nothing. Yeah, for nothing. So so it's just like I, I just knew it was going to be that way and I was totally fine with how with how it went. That being said, it was interesting that like what I liked. So I kind of personally liked that it was set up in a way where it wanted to keep your team together. Like in the previous rivals, it, it was like you're going woods, Scavenger I'm going hunt. reserve. 
and you're going, you know, shoreline and we just try to find this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. like, and so I liked that it pushed us together. And then the second, so that's what I liked about the new system. What I liked about the old system was that it was like, you have three hours, do the thing. And it allowed for like comeback stories. You know what I mean? Where it was like, holy cow, we, we hit three bingos in the last two raids. And so I was sad yeah. that the the part of the tournament the three of us would have done better at was the second half where looting meant a lot. You got a lot of points from looting. You got a lot of points from kills and not, you know what I mean? Like, you know, finding tank batteries was points. Killing a PMC was seven points. Getting their dog tag was three points. That felt more like Tarkov, whereas like a lot of what we do when we were on reserve, it was like Russia glue har spawn. And then it's like, you're going to get third party. You're going to get this. Everyone's kind of doing. So I was sad. Like, I understand it from a tournament perspective and from a, like, you want to be eliminating people and it makes it more stressful. But I, I liked how in the previous rivals, it was just like, everybody has the same amount of time go, go nuts. And it kind of allows for these last minute comebacks where we just kind of, we're just done. You know, we played for two hours and then it was just, we were like, okay, bye. You know what I mean? I would yeah. have loved to at least participated in that second tier. But then I, I get from a com competitive standpoint, the, a bracket system is fun to watch. It's fun to watch teams dwindle down to only one or two teams competing. A and I get that, but it I mean, was you just... Could do, you could do that with both systems. Um, what I liked about this one was that, like... Having four raids means that that the timer isn't ticking while you're sitting there waiting in queue or yeah. watching a spinner. So it really is like the quote unquote fairest thing because you, you know you actually have exactly equivalent time. Yeah. Um, and it also True. guarantees like you get in raids together. Um, before it was like, did I get killed by the other streamer? I don't know. Was it just a rando? These were yeah. like specific servers, and um, I don't know how the fuck they handled the matchmaking or, and whatever, how, yeah. that, how that ended up being a thing. But, um, but yeah, I, I kept saying I needed to just like stick to my guns. I kept saying, and you guys were like all for it. I kept saying I was going to go solo. And whenever I did, I was basically like, I get separated and I'd be like looking for like a long range shot. And then like, you guys would be talking about all this stuff. And I'm like, yep, I kind of want to go and help them. And then also like not be, too far away where I can't help, but then close and like too close where yeah. I'll accidentally TK them. Yep. So at that point, I'm like, I spent a, like 90 seconds just dilly dallying by myself. Nothing happened. And then I was like, spend the rest of the time making my way back over to you yeah. guys. And at no point did I ever like play how I usually play, which is go from building to building to building to building and yeah. listen for listen for enemies and, and try to shoot them, you know? Yep. Um, that, I mean, that's how I that's how I play. And that's, you know, maybe I'm a one trick pony. Um, but that's just like what I'm used to. No. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it was just rough. It was really, really rough. It, it I loved that it was on private servers. No player scavs was huge. And then knowing that there's like no real way to stream snipe, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. going to be other people doing their thing. You know what I mean? So that was, it was a blessing and a curse. A guy like me has, you know, my survival rate is propped up on killing, you know, the level threes. So when you put, you plot me in a server with landmark and cloak thief, I'm going to be, and, and I knew that. So I didn't expect it, but so I, but I really liked it. I, I liked that it was private servers. I thought that was great. I liked that you got to play reserve purged of player scavs. Um, I thought it would have made sense if they had made Gluhar spawn with the Ash 12 every time because yeah, that, that would have kept, like we were talking about it after, it would have kept a point in play. If you knew Gluhar spawned every raid, if you didn't get to him first, you still wanted to pursue who got him because there was a it was a flag to capture that was being moved around. And we killed Gluhar and he had the M1A and we we didn't qualify by one tile. You know what I mean? Like I whiffed a hundred meter headshot, which I'm still pissed about. That would have been a tile for us. Gluhar so did didn't, Gluhar didn't have the M1A, that would have been a tile. And then the confusion around the last man standing thing. There's always a, there's always at least one fucking rule. Before it was, uh, you know, was it Landmark? No, uh, Willers War, and yeah. Warren yep. teams I, who who got fucked. Like, oh no, I think it was Landmark too, right? Like they got fucked yeah. two two times in a row by ambiguous rules. And and yeah. in our case, the rule this time was effectively you had to be the last person to 
exfil survive the raid. So there was confusion over like, okay, so when the timer's ticking down, it takes what ten seconds to exfil. Mm-hmm. Let's say there's ten seconds left in the raid, and you step on the exfil at exactly ten seconds, you'll get out at exactly zero seconds. You would think that that would be like the last viable thing. Yeah. But technically, if you're a second late, there's still like time after the yep. zero. There's like a five where, or six second buffer. Yeah. So I saw people like waiting until there was like four seconds left and then jumping in and yep. then getting it. Um. So, but uh, there was too many, like, I don't know what stream to go to watch. Like I wanted to look at the VODs and I realized I'd have to look at 20 something VODs and then cross yeah. reference to figure out. If which one was the same raid, you know, yeah. to try to figure out like, did we not get it or or did we get it but somebody did it after us or you know like yeah, I still think I haven't gotten confirmation from anybody. I still think that it meant all the PMCs that were on that map had to be dead, and you could have extracted even with two minutes left in the raid if there were no alive players. Be the last, be the last one to survive. It said like I I think that's the now direction where you it was put like going. commas. But where yeah, you put oh like, yeah it, it, it for matters, sure right? so it like, matters. Be the last one in a raid, comma and survive extre- yes. is different than be the last one to survive and exfil. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Survive, comma and exfil, or be the last one to survive and exfil. Those are two completely different things. Because 100%. In, in one case, if somebody goes MIA and they and they end yeah. up just like dying, um, which Geeks did one of the the rounds, then technically that would prevent somebody else from getting the point if it was be the last person in a raid and survive. The thing is, is that like the one that he went MIA though, I wonder if somebody, if anybody got credit for, we could probably go back and see. Again, it would take so fucking long to go back through literally every streamers um, because we didn't know who was in our raids and stuff. But um, It, It was definitely better where like the last two Twitch rivals, they were like, four different squares that we all had questions about and like this one there was only like one or two that we had questions about they were they like they went the extra step this time where a lot of them it was like heal 400 damage and then in the fine print it said must be taken from weapons and like there was one that was like you know collect 20 dog tags and it was like must be found in raid so they they took the extra step but there was still a small sliver of ambiguity there and when teams were separated like you needed to play 16th or above to qualify. Teams 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 all scored the same amount of points. It was just, I think, who scored that many points first. We didn't. Do, we had zero points going into our third raid, three of four. So that's why we were 18. But when that many people all have the same amount of points, there needs to be zero ambiguity because getting one tile flips the whole thing around. You know what I mean? So Yeah. So I, I need to go back and watch Geeks' perspective too because that first raid... Yeah, the first raid, um, he I heard him get in like multiple fights, like two or three yeah. different PMC fights, and then he afterwards it was out that like first raid. He, but he killed like a scav and a raider, and it was like what? Like, and what a the PMC. Fuck? Oh yeah, he thought he killed three PMC. He killed one scav, one raider, and one PMC. Because you're not looting anybody, really. You know what I mean? Dog tags didn't count yeah. in that first round. You're just trying to stay alive. Yeah, so, so I that felt... was weird. I want to go back and watch because I because I was literally in in the bottom room at the end of one of the buildings in the reserve that has like the window that you can kind of like yeah. ramp up into. I was just standing there trying to figure out like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. Like, because you guys were both going from the, the ground level up to first story, up to second story across to the other side of the building. And you guys were going up and down the stairs. So I'm sitting yeah. there in this room and I hear footsteps <laughs> outside and I yep. hear footsteps above me. And it's like, is that one of them that just came down the stairs and is going out front or because it's so quick that you could just come out, you know, yep. come down the stairs, peek out front and then you'd be running back in the door. And I'd be like, I thought you were upstairs. Yeah. And that's the thing, because we're both running. All we can do is give you like we the information we give you on where we are is valuable for one second because we're yeah. f- full sprint. So I'm like, I'm on second floor on this side. But then three seconds later, I'm on the other side now. So because we're both running, it's impossible. And then he impossible. comes downstairs and it's like, yeah. and then the audio is fucked. So I still like, I don't even know whether to trust the audio I hear. Is it upstairs? Is it downstairs? Is it four stories oh, above dude. me? That so was... I'm just sitting there. I, I literally sat there on like the cot in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of like looking at chat who couldn't respond to me for two minutes because they couldn't see. Just yep. being like, what do I fucking do? Like, 
Bro, and then I felt it was so funny. I got audioed, but it looked like Geeks debated me so hard. He didn't because it was audio. So I see him down the hall, full sprint through a door. It was into one of the rooms where there's a hole in the wall. So he was like, let's go out. Like, because that was the feel. It was like, let's get out of here. You know what I mean? So like, let's go. So he runs full sprint. What Dude, I he, don't... He, Geeks plays fucking YOLO. Dude. When we're in groups, <laughs> he plays wicked aggro. Normally, he's like more passive, yeah. right? So... He goes in there and what he does is as soon as he runs in that room, he hears somebody outside, diverts into one of the showers and sits and hold. I didn't hear the audio he heard outside. And the last I saw of him, he was YOLOing out the door. So I swing around the corner, run right past him. I didn't know he was in the shower. He goes, wait, 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 wait. And then I'm just dead. And Cloaksy killed me. And I was like, and I I'm didn't literally know it. sitting. I'm sitting in the fucking room, just hearing like, I'm going, footsteps, footsteps, <laughs> wait, 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 Brrr, dead, oh, I'm dead, I got killed, and I'm just like, what the fuck, dude, like, what do I even, do? I don't want to run out there, because I'm just yeah. going to make it more confusing, you know? Dude, it was crazy, I felt so, I was so frustrated, because I died, uh, I died there, I have to, there's a two minute delay, so I can't talk to chat. I can't watch any of your guys' streams because then for chat, it's a four minute delay because I'm getting a two minute delay broadcast for geeks and then it's delayed two minutes. So I'm sitting there staring at my stash for 16 minutes until both of like you ended up dying and then geeks ended up dying. We gear up. We wait for the round to be over. We go in. We run into the very first building that we see. We go up to the third floor. I shoot at somebody and Landmark turns around and one taps me and I do it all over again. And I was like, I'm not you should be, see, at participating that point, you should be able at all. <laughs> like, you should be able to scav run just to like get some shit. Dude, I was just, in my opinion, I was like, I was like, I deserve to die there, but I'm just sad because I, I'm, I spent the first hour and a half of the tournament staring at my stash. Like it, and, and so I, it wasn't, although I will say though, I, watched you die one raid when you had the m1a i felt like i was watching a two minute delay but i was watching you and it felt like two different times you got really clean headshots on somebody and they didn't connect as headshots and then we yeah. watched the clip back because we didn't have anything else to do i saw it was like landmark willers and del delero or whatever i forget how you pronounce the name but they were all up on the of the building across from us and I put my MDR, I had the voodoo with the MDR, and I put it, he wasn't wearing a helmet. I put it right above his head because I thought the, the bullet would drop a little bit. And I click and nothing happens. And I really quickly react and I pull my reticle down directly on his forehead. I click again and he just runs away. And I was like, man. So I felt like I got robbed on a headshot. And then I was like, whatever, maybe it's just me. And then I watched you get robbed. Like, I wonder if that was the general feel. Like, I wonder if other people were feeling that way. Because I felt like you got some really clean headshots with the M1A that didn't connect. M80, but it doesn't matter if they're not wearing a helmet. You know my what first, I mean? So. My first kill was on a scav. And the scav was walking by. And I'm like, pop. And it hit him. And he turned. And they fell dead. And it was like, yeah, oh my see? God. Like, that's holy what fuck. I felt like the network was bad even on the private service. Now, that's not an excuse. Hear me. The 18th was as best as I was hoping for going to this thing. But I just felt like because because if the net code was bad, fixing the net code wouldn't have helped us. It would have helped everybody. Right. So it's not yeah. like I'm saying that that's an excuse for me being, you know, for our placement because everybody would have had better net code. But that's why I like I would have loved to hear from the other streamers on if because it was private service, if they were feeling that, too, because I thought and we we watched it back three or four times and chat was like, dude, you got robbed. That was a headshot right there. Like Landmark was going to turn on me and kill me whether I got that shot or not. You know what I mean? But yeah. it was just interesting. So but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I was glad they did private service. I think overall it pushed things forward. I would love to see stuff like I would love to see. I personally, as a guy who's much more comfortable that way, would love to see a duo tournament. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would be fun to do. Um, but overall, overall, I think it was, it was awesome. Um, it was super cool to see who did really well. Like, Clean Willers, uh, Clean Warren and Desmond annihilated round one. It was like second place had like seven tiles filled in and they had 11. Like, they annihilated it. And then it yeah. was super cool to see people really, really pop off that you wouldn't see before. Like, I think it was Sensei Scav and Finest XI came in second. And then Queen FPS and Sharp Tooth clutched a victory. Like, it was really cool to see people just, like, pop off 
do really well, get in the spotlight and like clutch up the competition. It was dope. It was for sure awesome. Yeah, I would um I feel like something I I oh, man, I mean this is just me being me, but like I would love a, a solo oh, yeah. tournament. Even if it was like reserve solo tournament, but I mean, just imagine like the Tarkov as like a sandbox and then like yeah. imagine there's like a fucking package you have to collect. Or I mean, even if it was just like glue car spawns always like on the map somewhere and yeah. what you have to do is like you'll get points if you kill him and or his guards and then like he always spawns with something in his pocket yeah. or whatever that like you can't put in your gamma because you, they don't give you a gamma. Yeah. So it was like then you have this whole thing where like it's almost kind of like paintball where some people can play like super aggro and super fast and risk and rush right yeah, up to the, yeah. to the thing or other people can stay back and like, you know, try to wait. But uh, but unfortunately, like if people are faster than you or you miss your shots, you know, on the one opportunity you have yeah. while someone's running from cover to cover, well, then like you just you're too far away to do anything. Yeah, um, I, I would love that. Like I would I think everybody that participated yesterday almost everybody would agree that that would be dope not to not to like take place of the like but i think everybody would be down for that because what you could do if you had enough players if you had like a hundred players right and they were all playing because it was 24 teams of three so that was just about 75 people and if a reserve raid can hold let's say 12 it would be really cool to do that many people still, but solos. And then when you died, you could just immediately requeue if you wanted to. And then when enough people died, and like you'd be waiting for players for maybe eight or nine minutes. But when it filled up, it just puts you back in a lobby and yeah. it was for points. Bro, I think everybody would like that. You know what I mean? Because everybody struggled. You know, Landmark's a solo player. Willers is a solo player. Uh, Clean is normally a solo player. Everybody normally plays solo. So it would be really interesting to see a similar format where you could just die, go back to your stash. How much money do I have? Cue back in and then just rip right back in. And it was like for points. You know what I mean? You had three hours yeah. to get as many points as you want or something like that would be sick. It just nailed. It just nailed home my biggest complaints and the, my biggest wants are the oh, yeah. sound is the sound is fucked and the network is still wanting and then if the i movement. if we had if we had voip see it, it, see nobody was running around like an aggro chat and everybody was playing smart and carefully yeah it was all like running from cover it was much more realistic it was yeah. running from cover to cover and then staying still in one spot I, I only Waiting, really shot listening. at like two people moving and yeah. everybody else. It was me like trying to creep into a building and like do a slow peek. And then you're just dead because someone's sitting in the corner watching yeah. that doorway. Um, so that's a lot more realistic and a lot more tactical. Um, yep. But uh, but yeah, like the the other bit that would have made my life a lot easier are the things I talked about. And that the, the one of the videos, one of the getting Tarkov videos was some sort of way of being able to naturally distinguish teammates and or proximity location-based VoIP. Just being like, yeah. if I hear like, I'm going upstairs and I hear your voice moving over there, I know that's you, right? Yeah. Like, I na you've now answered the question of, I hear footsteps there and footsteps there. Now when you both talk, even if it's muffled, yeah. I know if I hear footstep to my right, footstep to my left, footstep in front of me, and I'm like, where are you guys at? And you call out, call out. I now know to my right is an enemy yep. instantly. But yep. people, you know, people fucking get on my ass like, oh, you just got to fucking, you just got to get good at comms, dude. You just got to get good at comms. I mean, th you're not wrong in that like you yeah. can get good at comms, but it that's the equivalent of like if a, if a blind guy can figure out how to do something without vision – then we shouldn't rely on sight. You know, it's like, well, yeah. why can't I have the thing that I've been doing for 33 fucking years of my life, which is relying on my vision and my hearing and having those be yeah. spatially, logically linked together. Yeah, for sure. No, I agree. It's, it's, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot to it. I think, dude, the moment when I bought that thermal, Dude, and I just sat. I wasn't even mad. I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" I was just staring at my chat 
waiting for two minutes for just a sea of Keck W's. You know what I mean? Like that was the worst to have a two minute delay and to mess up to spend half of your cash accidentally on a thermal scope in a competition. And you just knew. And then it's, it was happening in all three of our chats. It just like a sea of Keck W's. It was so funny, but it was so funny because that was how we got our first two points. Because I was laying up on a roof and I killed Gluhar and six guards. And we got two points in that raid. And I was like, well, sc screw you, Chad. And we made it work. <laughs> I should have I should have bought one, too. Because honestly, like, again, it, it was when I'm playing in a normal match, you, you're you just basing. Everybody has different objectives. Yeah. And people are kind of like bored and they're motivated by like wanting something to do and wanting to have action. Yeah. So normally what you can do is kind of like move methodically throughout the map until you hear somebody naturally yeah. and then it's like there's a threat now let me stop let me wait let me you know like that's how i function yeah um but if everybody is playing to where nobody's making any noise nobody's moving and everybody's posted up somewhere yeah it's like you either can stay there until the timer ticks down to zero and you've literally done nothing which is what i yeah. spend a lot of my time doing unfortunately or you can say all right i'm gonna move let me peek my head. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. Fuck. And um, that really brings me to like, did you see the thing that Clean posted after, like, immediately after the tournament? No. It got like retweeted to Oblivion, which was which was good. It was good. But like, he was basically like, he was like, "Yo, Two Travels is great. Thank you guys for putting it on." But he was just like, everybody. He was kind of addressing the drama where like. So like one peg got it really bad. One peg killed Landmark and Landmark had, I wouldn't even say an unhealthy amount, a normal tournament amount of just like gamer salt. Like, oh, that dude freaking ratted me. You know what I mean? Like just, we would all say that if we, and like one peg, like 2000 people come into his chat and just like re. And then later uh, one peg killed clean and the same thing happened. And there was a lot like and then later on in the broadcast, I was watching the official rivals and the official rivals thing had two people up. It was the only two people uh, alive on interchange. They both had tank batteries. They were both walking and crawling to the to the extract, the same extract. And then they both heard the other person and they were both being like, oh, freaking extract campers. And neither of them were extract camping. They were both, but it really felt like the other person was extract camping because it's like, who's way out here in a bush this late in a raid? Well, so, okay, well, wait a minute. Wait, here's the thing is that if you're playing in a, like, all of that stupid just on on face value, but in the tournament, given the fact that that a number of the things are be the last one to survive yeah. and all this other stuff, or it was that you need to... Um, that it was on reserve, so there's only fucking basically two X fills. Yeah. Um, two that aren't like you're not telegraphing that you're, you know. Yeah. Like th with the fucking alarm or with the uh the 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 train, which was another one that was like everybody is going to be trained. Yeah. Basically, a third of the map is going to be at the train. A third of the map is going to be a D two, and a third of the map is going to be outside the fucking sewer. That's they've they've built into the rules. Yeah, you camp the exfil until yeah. zero minutes and zero seconds. <laughs> so that's what he was saying. Is he was kind of addressing all of that, and he was like, "Thank you for putting on rivals. That was super fun." And then he was basically just like, "You guys all need to chill." And and he was basically his his thing that he was saying was, Tarkov, in its essence, is the farthest thing from a competitive game. And these tournaments are fun, but when you try to make a competition out of a non-competitive game, it's not going to be as fun to watch as you think. Because exactly that, he's like, when the game is set up where the most efficient tactic is to camp an extract, then that's what's going to happen. And that's not going to be engaging to watch somebody for 30 minutes sit in a raid holding the extract, but that guy's going to come out with the W. You know what I mean? So he was just like, I, so I was I was wondering if you saw that because I really wanted to get your thoughts because it's I've got it, it pulled up I'm gonna want I'm gonna listen to it after um, okay I'm sure I'll probably agree with it I I it's an I mean, interesting rabbit hole to go down I mean it's just more of the same wow giant a bunch of mobs that are all and, and see like you can 
in this case, I'm not blaming any of the content creators. No, not um, at all. There, there are like communities on the internet where like I would be like this per fucking person is like inciting, you yeah. know, a riot. But like, that's not really a thing in the Tarkov community. Um, but like, I'm I'm not surprised that a bunch of fanboys, yeah, immature douchebags, when their favorite insert streamer here it gets killed by insert meme streamer here what a piece of shit i'm gonna go and shit all over them and probably there's probably reddit posts about it and yeah. everything and and the reason why it's about one peg and not about me this time is because he actually fucking killed somebody <laughs> and i most people probably didn't even know i was in the fucking tournament because i did nothing you know so yeah and that's the thing is that like once again to clean's point it's how the game is constructed as I understand it, what happened with a one peg and landmark landmark was up in one of the green towers in the corner of reserve, right? Like, you know, up top metal one camping. peg one, he, what, what, camping. Yeah. He was looking out. He had like his HK voodoo. One peg was just moving slowly through the map, like corner to corner. And when one peg got underneath that tower, he heard landmark moving around up there. What do you do? You, you squat. And you There's wait. nothing you can do. There's anything nothing you, do, you can do. You switch weapons, you heal, you open up a can of fucking Coca-Cola, you yep. make noise, and he knows you're there, and the only chance that one peg has is surprising yeah. this motherfucker. So he squats down, he waits, Landmark runs down the tower, and one peg, bop, 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 boom. And once again, it's like there's so many layers to it, because in a tournament when stress is high, if that happened to me... I would push my chair back and be like, oh, who plays like that? You know what I mean? You get the little gamer salt. I'd be frustrated. But everybody, like, the reaction is so, like, the community going over, like, it's so, it's like, no, every single one of you would have done the same thing. You're on private servers with the best players in the world. You hear somebody above you. You don't, you don't give up your tactical advantage and W key up the stairs. You know what I mean? It's like you're you're playing for money. You're playing. This is a tournament. Like, you know what I mean? You're not going to just be like, you know, what would be more fun for for chat to see. It's not like I'm for gonna, content. Exactly. Like, so it's like you're going to squat down. If the roles were reversed and one peg was up there, Landmark would have done the same thing because Landmark doesn't know if it's one peg or if it's, you know, any of the other content. Creators. He's just going to wait. He's just going to wait. And the same thing would have happened. So it's just but that is a beautiful picture of like that's Tarkov. That's how you're supposed to play Tarkov. Like, and that's why going back to your point, I understand that's why Tarkov is frustrating because Tarkov is supposed to be basically anchored to what you see and what you hear. And because the netcode is bad and because the audio is bad, we feel like we can't trust those very senses it's anchored to. But in a situation like that, like that was Tarkov. He was one person was tactically moving through a map stumbled upon somebody else who was tactically holding a position one person moved one person didn't one person waited for the time to strike ended the fight before it even began like that's that's primo grade a i would make a lesson you know a teaching tactics video about that on my youtube channel that that's perfect that's but yeah. in a in a setting like that, it's viewed as garbage tactics and stuff like that. So because people don't think th it's this frustrating. That's, this is the one scenario in which like I would never be like who fucking plays like that. I say that in a normal everyday pub raid because it's like who has the like who has the patience, yeah, and who cares that much to wait like fifteen minutes silently for somebody <laughs> and it's just like a Tuesday afternoon, you know. Yeah. I mean, Yolo it like I could be in it. I can get another fucking raid after this if I die. Yeah, you know, like worst case. But there's there's never anything on the line, you know. But when there's actually something on the line playing you you play it's it's a lot closer to real life because you're playing for your life and you're playing yeah. for an objective you're not just playing to play so at yeah. no point every time i died at no point was i ever like fucking assholes it was yeah. more like shit that nice fucking shot yeah or i, I wish it. i could have heard you you know what i yeah. mean like the frustration was at the game and and exactly it's like yeah so it was just it was it was weird it felt I liked that's what made the deaths even more um, meaningful because we couldn't instant queue into a raid. Like earlier, I was saying that that was frustrating me. It was frustrating me because it meant every life was so meaningful. Like when you die, you have to just sit there and wait for 45 you minutes have four tries. And that's that is Tarkov. Once again, there were elements of this competition. So, but that's I think what Clean was saying, where he was like, you can make 
fun, lighthearted, good competitions out of it. But you can't re when the most efficient tactic is boring because, you know, in combat, nobody's out there just running full sprint, jumping yeah. by doors. You're waiting for as long as possible before you have to make a decision. Or you have to swing the pendulum the other way and you go like, you know, Pestilis Punisher Tournament where it's like all solos, private servers, get as many kills as you can in three hours, go. You know what I mean? On factory. Well, of course you're going to get the W keys because your well, life this doesn't... Isn't, this isn't what Tarkov this is This isn't Tarkov, for. 100%. So that was kind of Clean's point, which I, I thought he said it well and I agree, is it's like he wasn't like poo-pooing on the thing he was like i love twitch rivals i'll be in it again if you if you would have me it's just you got to understand what it is because it's not it's 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 either going to be boring or it's not going to be the spirit of tarkov it's almost it's almost how like it is please everybody and there's going to be a large contingent of people that are butthurt and all those people are completely unaware of the fact that their perspective and their opinion is not the only one and it's not the right yeah. one all those yeah. people are like, for a fact, it, it, as if the other person is a flat earther. Like they yeah. are so sure that that they are on the right side of history on this argument yeah. that, you know, it's like they're, they're arguing over the best fucking ice cream flavor. And it's like they don't even realize the irony and how much they're fucking wasting their yeah. breath while also making, you know, content creators and community members lives more fucking miserable in the process. Yeah. And and the content creator, I'm not saying the delays were bad. I understand why they do delays on there. But the content creator is even less in control of like making sure that doesn't happen. Because like, you know, Landmark dies. He gets salty. He goes back in his stash. Two minutes later, he's forgotten about it. He's gearing up again. The chat sees it and they all start to go, you know, to someone else. And he he has even less control of being like, yo, 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 stop. You know what I mean? Because then he doesn't hear about it for two minutes and he's doing yeah. something else. And it's like, it's such a weird... It's such a weird thing. So yeah, it's it's just you just can't please everybody. I just it was it was really interesting. The whole community really of content creators was like retweeted Clean's thing. It was just like yeah, this makes a lot of sense. So it's just interesting. It's it's interesting, and I get it. It's a it's a two it's a double edged thing, man. From the Tarkov perspective, it's it's marketing, it's business. They're trying to sell copies of their game. They're trying to generate hype. I understand it, you know, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was, I, yeah, it's, it's, I think that's the thing is it's like overall, nobody, none of the players really hated their experience. It's just like, how do none we make of them sure were that, mad at other players? No. How do we get the community to set the correct expectations going in and not bring the vibe down? Cause clean, like clean was frustrated that his community did that. And, you know, clean was salty when one peg killed him. And the minute the tournament was over, clean like popped into one peg's uh, discord with one peg and his team. And they were just shooting it. They were like, oh, you son of a, you got me. And like, and then they were just shooting it and they were having a blast. And it's like, if you looked at that only through chat and you weren't watching, you'd be like, oh, this is toxic. But then when you see the people actually playing, everybody's like 10 minutes later, it, it's all shaken off. And they're like, oh, good kill, man. Like, so it's, it's, dude, the, the, the internet, the, it is so fucking terrible. It's, it's the, the best, best thing that's ever happened to humanity in the ever. world. It's literally the equivalent of, I mean, it's the, it's the reason why the mob mentality, yeah. like the, the pitchforks and torches, yep, it just completely dumbs everybody down to the lowest common denominator, and everybody is just like lynch that person, and they're fucking drooling all over the place, and they got their pitchforks, and they're like lynch that person, and that person's wrong, and it's yeah. like. It, it, there you lose all yeah we re we revert to our fucking reptilian brains yeah and you know nobody is actually like takes the time to empathize or critically think about anything um, it, and there's no way there's no way around it there's, yeah. there's we're never going to be able to um well, I, I i won't say never but like i see no way at least in my in the next year two three four years however long i'm going to be be a content creator um I don't see any way around it other than basically just being fucking cynical, you know, yeah. and just being like, like some, the, the mob, the masses. And it's the reason why we, whenever I talk about like Twitch chat, Twitch chat as an yeah. entity is something separate than any one individual For sure. in Twitch chat. So when I'm like Twitch chat 
is a bunch of moronic inbred cretins, you know, like yeah. There are some people who are like, oh my, I'm in, I'm in Twitch chat. <laughs> oh my god, you know, as if I'm like yeah. grabbing them by the fucking collar and like yelling that in their face. But it's like, no, it's it's go to any like political rally on the opposite side of whatever your politics are. Yep. That's how Twitch chat is. It's just a bunch of people screaming shit that is like incoherent to you and yeah. the opposite of whatever you want. And and cuz it's hard. It's when you feel like you're like out in the ocean and a tidal wave is sucking you up, it's hard to not just go with it cuz it happens so fast and then every individual person is like they don't give themselves enough time to think about the situation and then think about how they want to react. Everybody else is reacting one way. They want to be timely. They want to put input in. And so we just skip, we skip logic reason. We skip like, what do I think about this? What are, what are the factors around it? What would I do in that situation? And we just arrive at, you know, well, everyone's and, posting and, Keck W's, so I'll post Keck W or everyone's net going over to one peg's chat. So I'll go over to one peg's chat. This is like, I don't know if, which came first, the chicken or the egg, but, like, my philosophy of, of being, trying to be skeptical and, I mean, at one point, I'm sure, especially, like, in college, when I first got into skepticism, I'm sure I was definitely, like, a contrarian for the sake of being a contrarian, you know, just yeah, wanted yeah, to be, yeah. you know, but the there's actually, and, and a lot of people still say that I am, but that's because I disagree with, you know, 95% sure. of the things that they say. Um, so either I'm a contrarian or I'm right about all the things or I'm wrong about all the things or it's 50, 50 or, you know, so it's like, yeah. you can't just look at that and say, Oh, they're a contrarian. Um, but the, 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 the side effect of that, of that like mindset is that my gut reaction is always when I see the crowd and I see everybody go one way, I'm instantly like, that has to be wrong. Yep. <laughs> that has to be fucking wrong. Everybody else is like the natural bystander effect kind of thing where they all, and I'm like, no way. Yeah. Yeah. Like no way, you know, and, and I'm sure there's probably some downsides and there's probably like, you know, when everybody's going to buy in Bitcoin and everybody's saying hop on the fucking bandwagon. And I'm like, yeah, eh, maybe not. And then it goes up 10,000%. And I'm like, okay, I missed the boat, but at least I didn't hop on the boat a week before it fucking crashed exactly also, you know so it's like i'm sure the, the downside is that you miss opportunities but the upside is that you give yourself the fucking time to just be objective about yeah. things you know um 100%. and being a reactionary is is the fucking worst kind like that's sure. that's what that's what separates us from fucking apes yeah. is we don't just instinctively react or we don't have to we have the we have the ability to transcend fight or flight and yep. take a fucking second to think about what it is that we're doing for sure because it's a net negative to live that way right because like being you know slightly cynical and thinking you you miss a few opportunities to improve your standard of living but on the flip side you when you're wrong, you reduce your state. Like, you know what I mean? Like you actually go down when you invest all your money in Bitcoin and it crashes a week later, you have negatively affected your life as opposed to missing opportunities to positively affect it. When you miss an opportunity, you at least get to remain at neutral. Yeah. Although, when, you know what I mean? Like flip side of that though, is, is that this is kind of like the origin. I'm like, I'm like fucking spouting off my senior, uh, honors <laughs> program thesis for my undergrad i did the whole thing on like skepticism and all this shit That's it was funny. it was a a douchey pretentious work of art um that i'm proud of and still wince at whenever i read it um but uh but this kind of goes back to the origin of like superstition because kind of the opposite of what you were saying imagine that you are a monkey at the, you know, in, in the woods, right? Okay. And you hear rustling in the bush. Yeah. What has more of a survival advantage? Being skeptical and curious or just assuming it's a fucking predator and running away? Yeah, for sure. Running away. I mean, that's where, you know, the people who are like, oh, well, you know, everything is a threat. Everything is bad or everything like, oh, the last time I heard, the last time I heard rustling in the bush 
fucking Tony got eaten by a goddamn lion, right? So, like, that must yeah. be the thing that comes before all, and even though they might be wrong 99% of the time, the one time yeah. they're not, they get fucking eaten. That's part of why we sort of evolved yeah. superstition and superstitious, you know, pattern, um, invalid sort of pattern recognition and, and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Um, and I'm the one that's like, you know what? There's like a 4% chance that's a lion, but... I'm kind of curious to know now, you know, I mean, it could be like a squirrel. It could, it could be oh, so many lion. other things. Oh, I'm fucked. You know? Yeah, yeah that's, so. yeah, for sure. We've just, you know, Twitch chat is the not the place that you're going to make a mistake and get eaten by a lion. It's the place to be skeptical. And I see what you're saying, though. But, but imagine you're on a panel of people on a metaphorical stage mm -hmm. and there's a, an audience there. And someone goes, yeah, well, insert completely non, like, gray, black and white claim about something that you are not 100% sure of off the top of your head right now. And you're like, hmm. You take the time to think, and you're like, well, wait a minute. All anybody sees, the masses are like, oh, oh, oh shit. Yeah. Like, you got, like, he, like, he got you. You're stumped. You have no response. It's like, no. I'm doing some math in my head or I'm yeah, thinking about something sure. or or I'm I'm you know the whole like would your head get taken off by a fucking shotgun sh uh, the shotgun slug to the helmet that whole thing it was like are you sure let me think about that and everybody was instantly like of course it would what do you mean of course it would and everybody sees everybody saying of course it would and you know yep. uh, and of yep. course there's me and like three physicists in in <laughs> slush puppy you know in the audience that are all like Oh God! Looking around at all the fucking knuckleheads, being like, "Well, I mean, everybody's just fucking wrong." Like, okay, yep. what's new? Yep. So, yep. I think that's a a huge thing too. Is that like so many people think the opposite of what you said earlier, where it's like this many people couldn't be wrong, so I'll just go with it. Like you know, what I mean, your view is like that many. There's no way that many people reacted that quickly with the right answer. Like that's what provoked. But a lot of people just get swept up and like, I don't know, but there's no way, no way this many people are wrong. And it's, yeah, and then all you have would to surprise do to you. Them, <laughs> all you have to do to make them realize is this works never, but it should work is if they happen to be religious, you say, okay, well, what religion are you? Oh, I, you know, let's say they're Christian. Okay, cool. So X 40, 50%, whatever, you know, yeah. a percent of the world's population believes what you believe. That leaves how many billion people that are all ostensibly wrong, right? Yeah. Wow. You you mean five billion people can be utterly wrong about the fundamental core of their existence? Yeah. It's almost like anybody can be wrong about fucking about anything. About anything, yeah. And an argument from popularity is a fallacy. It's it's a textbook. Yeah. Like, that's like saying yes. you're wrong because you're ugly. It's a fallacy, yeah. you know? It's and confidence is so, like... In a world where so many of us are insecure about being right and wrong, the in a, world. in a world, the people who are often really wrong about things are just really confident about being wrong. And then that makes people who are right doubt whether because they're just not confident in it. You know what I mean? Like we used to do like we used to do stuff like we would go around. We used to travel around and do like big events and stuff like that, whatever. We would just like walk into a room and just I would just start clapping. And th 30, 30 seconds later, the entire room is applauding something and nobody knows why. Because somebody started clapping super confidently. Everybody was like, oh, I missed it. I missed it. You know what I mean? And then you've got a room full of three, 400, 500 people applauding and you just leave and everybody's confused. But they just think they just rationalize it. They go, well, it must have been something. That dude, nobody, nobody super confidently starts clapping unless there's something to clap for. And it's just like, then you well, have like an four. episode of like Frasier, but yeah. remove the laugh track. And see when you laugh. Oh my it's, god! It's, it's it's fucking like yeah. That's what it is. It's people are like, why would you put a laugh track on something that wasn't live in front yeah. of an audience? It's because you know that if you go, <laughs> yeah, you laugh. Like, oh, oh, that no, was I didn't funny. get the joke, but <laughs> okay. And it's like you don't get it, do you, <laughs> dude? No, it's so. It's so true. Vsauce did a video on that. I think he did it. It was I might have been one of his like YouTube original series, but he did that Mind where he, the field. Yeah, he set up a a thing where he had everyone in the room was an actor, and one of them somebody would tell a joke, and everybody in the room was always told to like just laugh, 
really hard and none of the jokes made any sense. And every single time that happened, the person would laugh. And it was just like, and then they would ask him later, like, can you tell me the joke back? And nobody could say it because it was weird and it didn't make any sense. And it was just funny that it was the exact same thing. It's just like interesting. That that has another layer. I'm, I think I remember that. That has a, another layer of complexity, though, because if someone tells me a joke that's not funny, I will laugh to be courteous. This social, yeah. But for if sure. I am, but if I'm watching a television show in my living room and there's a joke that isn't funny or I don't get it, I'm gonna like what you know. Yeah. But. There might be, yeah, I might be with my wife and she might laugh at like some fucking quantum physics joke while I'm watching Interstellar. And I'm like, you didn't get the time dilation joke there, right? <laughs> like you were just fucking laughing because, you know, like you knew it was supposed to be funny. People yeah. are, some people are just like, oh, well, you, you know that when they're all of a sudden the music stops and they cut into a close up of a face. Oh, OK. Uh, you know, that's the fucking punchline. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of, did you did you end up seeing we can like double segue here okay? because that just reminded me of, I watched every frame of painting all over again, every single episode oh yesterday. My gosh. Um, did you see the one about the Marvel symphonic universe? Yes. It's dude. It's like, it's how wild. many, how many of those movies? So it, the, the whole thing, and we're talking about every frame of painting, which is a, um, a YouTube channel that, yep. that talks about like cinematography and, and, and there's all sorts of cool shit. Um, but it's called, uh, the movie's called the Marvel symphonic universe. And it's like, starts off with, people being interviewed in like Vancouver out on the street. And they're like, uh, can you sing any of the music from star Wars? And everybody's like, dun, 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 dun. and I'm like, okay, from Harry Potter. And they, then they fucking whistle it. And it's like, they're, they're going through all these different things. And they're like, yep. how about a Marvel movie? And fucking everybody was like, huh? No, yep. no, I can't think of any. And then one guy was like, Oh, I see what you're doing. Like, yep. um, so the whole thing is about how the, the, the fucking music is just so forgettable. And it goes along with like the mindset of kind of that the the age we're in with the genre um, of like temp music and all. You, sh you should watch it. I won't get into the details, um, but uh, I just found it so fascinating how like they showed two or three separate examples of movies I had actually never even seen. I I never I haven't really yeah. seen any of the new Marvel movies um, except for like the OG Iron Man with yeah. Robert Downey Jr. like way back. That was honestly probably the last like superhero movie I saw. Really? Um, but like they would have all this music playing and it was just this fucking generic, the thing you'd find in GarageBand in like the loops section. 100%. And, and they would take out the music. He took out the music and he played the scenes and there were literally more moving moments without the music yep. or with different completely separate music that dude he really showed you yeah like he would replace the music and it was always like infinitely more powerful and moving and like evoked more emotion and like you you don't realize how much music is in those movies because it's so nothing like it's just there's By so design. much yeah it's Dude, just so much so background sad. music and it's just nothingness and then all that the whole temp music thing was so interesting where it's like i want it to sound like this so they rip music from another movie because this is the vibe and so then you blatant. watch the and same then you, tempo the same key the same instruments like, and it's like well because they rip it because it's like okay the director's like i want this vibe and then you watch that cut 600 times and now you can't separate so then the and then the actual through the music yeah and then actually so the composers the tempo. are now bound to that i dude i was actually today i was watching an interview with christopher nolan about interstellar and somebody asked him about like during the writing process of the movies, do you think of certain actors that you would have in mind? And he's like, absolutely not. He was like, I see these people as like characters, like completely devoid. It's not anybody I know because then you can't separate it. And if you don't get Matthew McConaughey, you're screwed because you wrote it for. And it's the same thing that happens that you watch a cut of a movie with temporary music. 600 times in editing before you send it to the composer you now just can't separate that in your brain yeah. and now you want it to sound exactly like that and dude that's it's so weird imagine yeah. writing a script and you think jim carrey is your main actor yeah. and it ends up being someone else it's like everything is going to be like fucking jim carrey you know <laughs> like yep a hundred percent hundred percent so so it was super interesting yeah every frame of painting dude that one was super interesting with the music and just taking how you talk about taking risks and just like how the music has to support the emotion and people just 
people are afraid of that. They're afraid to let an emotion like linger. Yeah. For a long time. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, now there's so many things. Like I wanna I've been doing a lot of these uh a lot of my kind of like video essays. Yeah. Um so there's only so much because I'm cutting in fucking footage from video games and stuff, right? There's not like I'm yeah. working on like blocking and all yeah, this other yeah. stuff. But there's just so many aspects of things that like I want to get a fucking camera and I want to make a movie now. I'm like oh. so inspired. The one about Kurosawa and um and uh, I don't know if it was Kurosawa or not, but there was one about like doing an ensemble, um oh. doing the ensemble take yeah. where it was like there's two dudes in like a it's it's a I think it's a Japanese movie. They're all cops and they're like in a in like a strip club or something and they're like yelling at each other and one like reaches across the table and grabs the, the other guy by yep. like the shirt and you can see in the background all the scenes going on. There's like another dude who's on the other side of the couch, like making out with a chick in the background. So you have like this contra serious contrasted with like the funny. Yep. And then like all the as it's like kind of slowly panning in, all of a sudden you see sitting in between them, in between all three of the people that you just saw, like the the fucking captain or whatever, like sits up and he's like about to puke because he's like hung over or whatever. So all of a sudden he like ends up like interrupting the whole thing. Yeah, everybody stops and now it's like he ends up like puking into this little bucket and then he says like the super serious thing and it's like you have like this anger over petty bullshit and then like lust in the background and then all of a sudden you see like this guy who's figuratively like the moral center but yep. also like the center the physical is just, center like, oh my god dude it's like fucking genius you see all and then and then i watch a marvel movie and it's like shitty music and they cut to a guy being like this is exactly what's going through my head and here's exactly what I'm going to yep. do and this is what I'm going to do next and this is exactly what you just saw me do and then it cuts to somebody else and the, the only person in the scene in front of a fucking green screen and they say, okay, this is how I'm going to react and it's going to be this thing and this is what's going to happen, okay? And it's like, that's fucking movies now. Yep. Bro, so two things. One, I that's what I miss about making movies. Like I used to do videography and video editing for a living. I would sit like I am not joking to you that sometimes it would take me two days, two work days to find the music for the video because in like my brain, I could I could not progress forward without the correct music. I the music was it's so instrumental to how I oh. edit. And that's part of being a musician and, and growing up that way. And that was always like when I would show it to friends uh, when I ended up doing it for a living and I would show it to my boss, the number one compliment I would get on my work was that the music and the the take really match an emotion. And I was like, well, and but like I would spend entire days just sifting through, you know, music bed. And it's just and you, you would just become numb to all sound because I just I could not progress like some some of the stuff I did. Some of the, my favorite stuff I did was like some weddings because they're naturally such emotional times. You know what I mean? It's so much better than doing, you know, a, um, like a corporate video for a, you know, a rental agency. It's like, okay, you just put some upbeat yeah. music behind that. But doing a wedding, you can find music and then find these shots that like really make it feel and make you feel something. And so I miss that. But what I was going to say about the, uh, like, you were saying how, yeah, you look at a Marvel movie and now it's just like everything's serious and it's just like I'm just saying everything I want to say. It's always so interesting to see like it's interesting to see this weird backwards thing. And this will ultimately end up potentially segueing to some other stuff we want to talk about, with like just gaming in general right now. But it's happening across all like media, which is like it feels like something tries to take itself really, really seriously and be unique. And then that attracts a larger audience because it's unique and it takes itself seriously. And then it gets out all the rough edges and it gets bastardized into what we all want to see. So like a great example of this, because like you were saying where it's like, I hate that too, where in, like you get in these movies where the guy's like saying exactly, he's filling in the audience exactly everything. You're too stupid to understand there's, that there's, there's the, nothing what's going on here to be left to be understood. And that's where like a lot of stuff is devolving. And then you look at something like Game of Thrones, which is such a meme. You know, you see all the memes about like the first four seasons are incredible and it slowly built an audience. And that audience turned into a global, like worldwide phenomenon. Like, you know what I mean? Like this was it was breaking records. It was 
and they they threw it all in the trash. It became exactly it didn't take itself seriously. It over explained everything that was going on. It stopped, you know, continuity between things like it used to take. You know, it took, you know, X character four seasons to just travel from this place to this place because that's how long it would take given the story. And then in the end, it's just like people are zipping all over the continent and everybody's we, fast traveling back. and Yeah, because we're all just like sick of. And it's such an interesting concept to see that we're like. You know, because it's like you get the big box people, you know, what sells, what sells is what what's expected. You know what I mean? They know that they can put out another Marvel movie and it'll it'll make another four hundred million dollars. But it, what, if, what I find interesting is when people start projects that then slowly build popularity because they're different and then they end up assimilating into the exact same thing, which is what we talk about all the time with like Tarkov. Like Tarkov blew up because it was so different and brutal and hardcore. And now so many of the player base are like, no, don't make things more expensive. Don't make things harder. Don't make things this. And then we've got a section of the player base that wants to turn Tarkov into Call of Duty. And it's like, I find that long term devolving state of of media so fascinating that we want things because they're new, unique and then we want the comfort of what we know so we want to turn the unique thing into something that's less unique it's, it's it just, just brings weird. me this just brings me back full circle to like if you think about half of the fucking dj peach gobbler videos the whole yeah. like the beatles oh completely changing and yep. um you talk about like uh, someone mentioned Anni Annihilation and how like it was such a different, unique movie that just kind of flopped because it was like, what is this? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, he talks about like Death Stranding and how it was like a totally new out of nowhere IP, completely new shit. Like, yeah. And it just like it flopped, quote unquote, because, you know, people just all they they just dumbed it down to like it's almost like they applied their own formula to a yeah. thing that didn't have a formula applied to it. So, oh. It doesn't have X, Y, Z. Oh, well, then all I notice is that it's a running simulator. Yeah. Nothing is allowed to be intentionally niche anymore because Death Stranding is a like great a example. Hipster. Everything is a uh, Death Stranding is a great example because like DJ Peach Cobbler pointed out, the Steam reviews were overwhelmingly positive because those are the people that purchased the game and played it. But, you know, Metacritic and all this other stuff was really negative. And they were like, you know, they knew that not everybody was going to like this gameplay style, but they knew the people that liked it would love it. And that's how we judge things. If it's not a smash hit, it's a failure. And that's such a sad thing. And then like we see that rub in Tarkov right now where it's like a niche game that's become a smash hit. And Nikita's just like middle finger to you. I'm going to make the game that I want to make. And then the community is X, Y, or Z. But it happens across media all over the place. And then you see things like you know, movies like Annihilation or movies or video games like Death Stranding and the general public see it as a failure, even though the audience it was intended for love it. You know what I mean? And it's just... Dude, this is like... Weird. Think about all the things that we've been bitching about <laughs> for the last, <laughs> like, hour. How many of them are because two things. People don't take the time to think and be skeptical and think for themselves. Yeah. And... People don't understand the abstract. Yeah. That's the reason why fucking everything sucks. Politics, <laughs> medicine, fucking the internet. Like, yeah. it's it's the fun. It's just why I did my thesis. It's still fucking true. It's like the, the origin of all... I almost just... <laughs> I just had like a weird thing in my head, like a creative thing where I was talk talking about, you know, the origin of species by mm -hmm. Darwin. Yeah, yeah. I just came up with like the origin of specious reasoning <laughs> would have been would have been a really good title. Anyway, mm -hmm. sorry. I, I was just like specious. That's mm -hmm. that, that's that's a word. Right. And then. Uh, yep. OK, sorry. My brain just completely fucking. And that's why I mean, it's all it's why I like I hate hot take culture. We are in we're in hot take culture, right? Because a hot take is is never that something is good. A hot take is always something is good and something and this, you know, X is good, but Y is garbage. Right? Like we just we we live in this society right now where it's either the best like it's either the best or it's the worst. 
You know what I mean? It's very binary. And I just, it's so frustrating because it's, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Like, you know what I mean? Somebody else could love it. Somebody else could love Death Stranding. Somebody else could love some other thing. And it's just so, we're so, there's just nothing in between amazing or terrible. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's just weird, man. It's just frustrating. I need to go back and watch. I, I still haven't actually watched like any of the movies that, uh, that he talks about in every frame of painting. Oh I'm like, yeah. Part of me is scared because I might be like, this is fucking boring. <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> like I won't, I won't appreciate what yeah. I'm supposed to like appreciate, you know, but, but I mean, honestly, I think a lot of that comes from just like, not if you're not a musician and you, and you, and you don't have experience with like music production, then you won't notice certain things that you would otherwise be impressed 100%. with when you hear like whoa that cool effect with the thing and the panning and the the way that you did you know like you can realize things yeah. the more you know the more you can appreciate the, the more you know the more you'll appreciate subtleties and like the fine details yeah where the things that are mad expensive custom one-off hand-built fucking artisan yeah. whatever that took a hundred years for someone to carve in stone with their hand you'll really have a respect for that but everybody else will buy the plastic one at Walmart, you know, yep. Yep. because it's good enough, you know. Yep. That is like a another perfect metaphor for this society. <laughs> these fucking, all these fucking kids. We are... live in a society. Okay, so speaking of, so last episode um, that nobody has listened to yet because we just went live right before this. Um, we did like a call to action that, again, nobody heard. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, so this is a reminder Sorry. that we want to do this for next week. So hopefully this will, will go out before next week's episode um, to where you can go to the website, um, which I'm now forgetting off the top of my head. And I had it up last time, but you can go to our, our website Anchor. for the podcast. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up. Um, view public site. It's anchor.fm slash podcast live. So you can send us messages, recorded voice messages. Um, what we want to do is have like a segment every week where um, we, because we want to talk about, you know, quote unquote, the poggers things in life where one of yeah. us recommends something to consume that the other person hasn't. Um, and, you know, almost like a book club, you know, do a little report. Let me know what you think, you mm -hmm. know, and then um, maybe let that inspire you to you know recommend something on the other end but also the listeners can participate too by sending us the voice messages and i'll go before the episode and listen to them and pick them out i haven't done it yet we have no idea how it's going to be uh we'll probably end up getting a bunch and then I'll, I'll i'll just put the ones from last week and this week yeah all together into the next episode and maybe i'll play them live um but um but, but either yeah, way so it'll end up being you guys being able to recommend stuff That'll be kind of homework for us to like either watch, listen to, or whatever, and then discuss as a part of the segment of each show. Yeah, for and sure. So, that, so there's that aspect, and then there's also like if you want to take our recommendation and when watch or listen to whatever it is we recommended, and then give us some feedback about like I thought it was good, I thought it was shit. Um, I, I you know, if if you have some interesting feedback, I'd, I'd like to hear it. So by all means, everybody hop on the bandwagon. And uh, I was really sad when every day i checked my email and it didn't have any didn't have any emails from anybody and then and then i it wasn't until we started this episode that i realized it was we didn't make it live. <laughs> didn't post the, so, the podcast so last week the i started with my first recommendation which was for you to check out the internet historians kind of two-part video on his main channel and a second channel about balloon boy oh my god what did you think it was incredible it was like it was so interesting because I like remember that like going around, you know what I mean? But it was so far removed that I didn't, I didn't know anything. And it just was, it was like sad to watch, to watch the whole story and then watch, you know, Richard Heaney's kind of like response to it. So basically like he saw guy. the first video and then like sent like a 30 minute video pleading his case to internet historian. And then he put that on his second channel and Bro, the amount of shenanigans that went down, like, because it's definitely a weird situation, man. You know what I mean? Like, uh, he's a weird dude. Like, in the first video, like, Internet Historian really 
paints him as a weird dude, bro. It's like, so funny. He's so different from like those two kind of weird like commercial yeah. things he does to then I thought he was a lunatic, but then like hearing him talk throughout the whole second thing, I'm yeah. like it's like he's he's like the guy my that, fucking spirit animal. He's guy. like the guy that didn't get cast to be the sham wow guy. Like he's got that <laughs> energy, but he didn't get it, and he doesn't know where to because put he this said energy. Fuck too many times yes. in, in, oh. in his audition. <laughs> By the oh. fucking sham. Oh, should I dude. not have said that? Oh, oh shit. So now, yeah, we'll, dude, we'll you, dude, some of those commercials that he played, you were just like, woof. So he's a weirdo, you know what I mean? And like, why are you? Like, and, and the whole thing, he was trying to create, like, perpetual motion. You know what I mean? And you're just, like, in his backyard. So you're like, come on, Well, no, dude. it wasn't perpetual. What he was actually doing was interesting science. It wasn't bullshit. Yeah. It was super fucking nerdy. I, I yeah. can't imagine anybody would go through. I mean, that's the shit that I would fucking do. Something no, I like know. But it's like, <laughs> but, but. When when the guy, you know, when the guy who didn't get cast as sham wow does it, if you don't know the science, it's hard to not. You think he's building feel, a flying yeah. saw? And the fact it's that hard not the, to feel like it's bull. Like the dude, the problem is, is that like when you have his wife with a really thick accent sitting there talking to the police about the flying saucer, that like it's dude. like, how do I take any of this seriously? Dude, it's wild. And then it's, you listen, you listen to him go through everything. And yeah. For me, I would bet my house, he is innocent. One hundred percent, a hoax. 100%. Like it's an open and shut case. I feel that's pretty definitive. Yep, that he's there's no way he did it on purpose. It wasn't a hoax. He didn't lie about it. He freaking, he freaking, it was a mistake. And then the police really wanted it to go one way, and they made it go that way. And then the yep. media and the crowd. It's one of those things. Like I, I'm gonna. I feel a little bit weird admitting this, but I'm gonna fucking do it. I. At like 4 a.m. after watching the, the second video on the second channel. Yeah. I literally wrote him an email. Really? I wrote it. And it was only like three sentences, three or four sentences, yeah. but it was basically just like, and it wasn't from like Veritas. It was from like my personal email. Yeah. Yeah. Basically being like, I know it's been fucking, you know, forever Years, and, yeah. you know, whatever, but like, just know. I basically said something along the lines of like, I know what it's like to feel like you're the only fucking person in a room that is sane and you're in the twilight zone. Just wanted to say like, you know, I, you know, have respect for you and I hope I believe you. All well. <laughs> yeah, ba yeah. I believe you. And you know, so he, he didn't respond back to me and now I'm like saying it out loud. I'm like, what a fucking douchey thing. But then again, I read emails like that from people all the time saying. and it just makes me smile. And if I get a chance to get back to him or not, you, you never, never know. know. But, it, um, bro, hearing like, because it's like objectively shenanigans went down. You know what I mean? Even if there's a one in a trillion case that we are duped and it was a hoax, whatever, like there's security camera footage, like there's transcripts, there's police reports, like there the is video, objective, the police, the police objective is fact they're lying. that there was shenanigans a hundred percent, like, like. Dude, the the interview with the wife, the wife in the police station, bro. The questions that they were asking her. Somebody in the comments, bro. It was the best comment because somebody said something along the lines of like, "All those cops were doing the police version of Does your mom know you're gay? If you say yes or no, you're screwed." And that's yep. what it's every single question was intentionally structured that if she said yes, she admitted it was a hoax. And if she said no, she admitted it was a hoax. Did you know your did you know your husband was planning this hoax? No. Oh, so you didn't know that this hoax was going to take place? Yeah, no, I didn't know. And then they're like confession. And you're like, wait, what? she doesn't barely speaks English. You know that shenanigans. Dude, that's, that's, that's why, like all of the things that they are so they were so confident about that was like the police said the wife admitted it and it was like that that was exactly the thing that fucking triggered me so bad was that the cop basically said th there was one sentence with like a semicolon in the middle the first one was a question and the second part was a question one of them should have been answered yep. yes and the other one would have been answered that no matter no. what yep. it would have they would have been opposite and he was like so you knew your you knew that your son was up yeah. in the in the attic, and it's like, I know now that my son was in yep. the attic. Like, I think she took it as like, did you know that your son was in the attic? 
you know, I mean, yeah, I know now, but I didn't yeah. know at the time. So he's like, yeah. did you know that your son was in the attic? And so like, and, and then she asked another question that was like, yep. And she basically said like, yes. But then the next question was no. And then yep. he said, I asked her a completely differently phrased version of the question. Yes. And she said, yes. And it was like, no, you asked her a, a, a different question and she answered no. Like, what the fuck? Like, Dude, total it, bullshit. A hundred percent. And then stuff like, like as simple and easy to debunk as they were talking about, like the craft was only this wide, so it can only hold this much. So there's no way it could carry a, a, the weight of a child. And then it was like, they gave him when he got out of prison, he was allowed to claim the thing back. And then he just lays it out on the floor and measures it with a measuring tape. And he's like, yeah, you see it's six feet longer than they said it was. And that increases the volume by like 40%, which means it could that totally you could be carry a kid. Of. Even that you could be skeptical of because it's coming from him. Maybe he built another one. Yeah. But there's pictures that they gave him that were yep. from the evidence where yep. they measure it. Yep. And and it they're the numbers are right. And you know what the best part? I, I still yep. can't part of me actually is trying to wonder how much of this is just ineptitude and being morons, more so than it's like, you know, it's the whole like Bush did nine eleven. It's like, oh, it's a little bit easier to just assume he's a fucking moron than like yep. a, a criminal mastermind. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now these these cops based on some of the history, like they probably were bullshit assholes, but some of it was probably ineptitude because yeah, like if you have a video recording you you're going to need to be more careful about what you ask on video if you're going to just straight up lie on the th but then the other bit was um oh fuck what was the other part that uh wait, what were we just talking about shit with the like the the craft and the measuring and if it could carry the weight of the child oh yeah yeah they got they got like a, a a college professor to basically say oh yeah if if the if the dimensions were this the incorrect too small thing then it wouldn't have flown but then they somehow took they yep. took this guy's statement and they kept in the second st the second part yeah. which was, but if it was as big <laughs> as he originally said it was it absolutely could have it flown. absolutely could have flown it's like if you're gonna lie delete the second sentence like yep. end it with a period not a comma and then a caveat yeah like what are they thinking <laughs> like yeah oh it was my God. i it, i really really empathized with him because like this isn't like trying to figure out who the Zodiac killer is. Like anybody who gets the police reports and got a hold of the pictures and the video, any regular human being would be like, well, this guy is 100% innocent. And he went down for it and he went to jail. And and like, that's what's crazy. Like making a murderer. Every it's, other episode, I'm like, he's innocent. He's guilty. He's innocent. He's guilty. Yeah. He's innocent. Have you seen Making a Murderer? No, I haven't seen it at all. Oh. I, I haven't seen that yet. Oh my god! I dude. know, I know it's good. I just haven't watched it yet. Okay, well, that needs to be whether or not. Did, do you have anything to recommend? No, for me? I don't. I need to spend so more then, time thinking so about then it. Then we should probably watch Making a Murderer this fucking All right. week. All right. I, I, there's not that many episodes. Making a Murderer, dude. It's so good. Now is this each one episode about a different person, or is the whole thing about one person? It's all about one person. Okay. Um, let me let me just see how many episodes there are. Um, the, there so there are two seasons, and it looks like there's probably ten episodes in the first season. All right, so I mean, you're, you're looking at ten or twenty hours here. Okay. Um, but trust me, when you fucking watch a couple of these, you're gonna be pulled in. I, Every other episode, I'm like, this guy is totally. He went to jail for you know like however many years, and I think he might still be in jail. I forget how it ended. I won't spoil anything, and luckily, I don't even remember. Um, but it's like every other episode, I'm like, he's absolutely fucking guilty. The next one, I'm like, there's no way he's guilty. Then the next one, I'm like, he's so fucking guilty. And then the next yeah. one, I'm like, there's no way he's guilty. And then the next one, I'm like, he's absolutely guilty. But the cops also like planted everything and everything's Bro. so sketchy. But maybe that maybe he's not like I just kept going, going back and forth and back and forth. This uh, Bloom Boy totally fucking as There's as, like yep. I can't think of anything that would change unless yep. there was a video recorded beforehand where like somebody's in the background holding up a newspaper and the TV's playing in the background and they can triangulate the fucking path of the 100%. sun and everything to figure out like that, that he admitted to this whole hoax beforehand. It's the strength of evidence. All the police's evidence was trust us and all of his evidence was look at this publicly attainable knowledge. It doesn't make sense. And so it's like strength of evidence. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. everything, everything he was saying 
wasn't like, trust me, on that day, I promise I was in the living room. I wasn't in the garage. It's like, well, how would we look ever know? Look at the know? video I got from the cops. Exactly. They, it's, they look at the video. Lying. Look at the police report. Look at the thing. And so it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. And, and the fact that they have like video footage of the kid coming out of it, crawling out of it, showing that he was in and out of it all day. So it was a plausible thing to think he could be inside of it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's dude, it was wild. Tell me you've watched American Vandal. Never heard of it. Okay. You need to, if you like making murder and you like laughter, you need to watch American Vandal. You need to watch hmm. American Vandal. High school is, high school is rock. The high school is rocked by an act of vandalism with the top suspect pleads innocent. Pleads innocence? You plead innocence or innocent, uh, probably both, and finds an ally in a filmmaker, a satirical true crime mystery. Watch hard, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Dude. It, I need, wait, what's that ellipsis leading to? Watch hard. You just. And, uh, do I have to watch hard? Is that a. Bro, if you watch one episode, it's it's satire, but it's the best Oh, Satirical. hard fact is the name of the first episode. Oh, that's why I'm like, watch, watch hard. hard. <laughs> okay, I had, it's to, I had to know. the best satirical true crime documentary. It's so good. Oh, wait. So it's a documentary, like a mockumentary? Yeah. Kind I've of. only ever seen one mockumentary, and it was Spinal Tap. It's, dude. This... Have you seen Spinal Tap? Mm -mm. Fucking, we need to start. Okay, I'm making a list. <laughs> I'm making a list. Dude, Spinal Tap. Oh, my God. Are you familiar at all with Spinal Tap? I mean, I've heard about it quite a bit, but... Oh, God, dude, it's just like a fucking... Oh, it's so good, man. Spinal Tap. It's, it's a mockumentary about, like, a fucking rock band back okay. in, like, the 80s when, like, metal first comes out. And okay. The, the kinds of shit you'll see is, like... They, they have the interview with these guys, and they're all, like, British rockers, and they're all fucking doing drugs and hanging out with, you know, hookers and whatever. And then, like, yeah. you see, like, one night they have a crazy night with hookers, and then, like everything goes crazy and then the next time they're interviewed they all have like herpes <laughs> like oh just, my like, subtle, god like just like it, nobody says anything yeah it's just like they're in front of the camera and they're, and they're talking it's like oh my god there's this one of the guys goes through a fucking metal detector in the airport and it's like beep 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 and it's he's got like a cucumber wrapped in tin foil shoved in his pants to make it like a big bulge because it's oh the fucking 80s and i'm a rocker god. it's so good oh my god okay dude you, you need to watch American Vandal. American Vandal is one you will immediately forget it's not real. And every time you remember, you will 100% prefer that this was real. Like you, you will, you will be mad when you watch it that this is not real. It's, it's really good. A it's, uh, American Vandal. Okay. So Jesse's got to watch Spinal Tap, the Making a Murderer. Veritas has to watch American Vandal. Yes. Yes. Mm, yes. Yes. Okay. Um I now I want to know okay, so next week I want to I want to fucking know I want people to respond to whether or not they think that Balloon Boy, Mr. Balloon Boy. Oh yeah. If they think he's gu uh, guilty of the hoax or oh. innocent of the hoax. I want to know if anybody if there's any fucking loonies out there that say he's innocent. There's I mean, sorry, if there's any loonies out there that say he's, say he's guilty, guilty, you're pretty much guaranteed to get on the podcast, and I'm going to fucking roast you. <laughs> but I want, I mean, uh, just kidding, I'm going to be nice. Uh, think differently, be skeptical. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> um, did you ever watch The Jinx? No, was but I hated that Pokemon. <laughs> it was an HBO... Um, true crime thing that I re it's it's got the best I really just want to spoil it because it's so good to talk about but if you if you think you're watching I won't spoil it um I'm probably not gonna watch it but see I'm fine with getting a spoiler it's just probably don't want to have a spoiler on the pawn cast I mean, I mean it's been people. out for like eight years like the statute of limitations I mean but I guess if people want to watch it then what's it what's it called again the jinx the Jinx. All right. Is it a, is it like a, a one movie? A, uh, it's a, it a it's show? a limited series on HBO. Okay. The Jinx. All right. So 
I'll watch a trailer of it, and, and maybe next week if I don't end up watching it, I'm gonna watch American Vandal. Yeah, uh, you, I've I, definitely watched that over the Jinx. And then um, I'm excited too because it looks like there's two seasons, eight episodes, eight episodes, about forty minutes. That's that's yeah. These days I've I have nothing to watch, especially because YouTube has been fucked yeah. the last few days. It's been like not, it's just been not loading, and uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So there's been just fuck all for content to watch i've just been watching shit all over again like a, a internet historian and every frame of painting just like go back Dude. to the beginning i've been listening to the same podcast the fucking cool games inc that game design podcast yeah, yeah i literally i don't know i forget how many episodes there are um they are all about an hour long um and i've yeah this may be i don't know 60 70 or something Okay. And I listen to all of them and then I just go back to the beginning. Oh my god. And I go back to the beginning and I go for some reason. I have reason, a I'm... really hard time rewatching content. I have a really hard time rewatching or re-listening to. I even though even though I know I, I loved it and I know I will love it to watch it again, I end up just getting in show holes and just staying yeah. there and not watching anything and I hate it. Like I really, really want there to be I I, I need more to watch. So I'll watch Making a Murderer, I'll watch I need to watch Spinal Tap. Um, yeah, Making a Murder is one of those ones that's like I'm always it's, looking it's, for it's Balloon Boy, but it's not as cut and dry, and it goes so much deeper and so much wider. It's gonna fuck with you for the yeah. rest of your life. You're gonna be like, I don't. Some <laughs> I people need are to like, know. they're sure. And I am I I don't even remember where I landed at the end. Yeah, I just remember thinking like, it's such a clusterfuck that like, at that point. Like the real the real thing should have been this is so scuffed that just like don't send the guy to jail and just hope he doesn't fucking murder anybody yeah like you know the I mean? whole like, thing is just it's too far gone like yeah like th th this case is so fucked yeah. you know the whole point of like not sending someone to jail is like well they're gonna do it again they might they might not if he's like a psychopathic serial killer i mean he doesn't he, he's just a simpleton he doesn't yeah you know he, he's not like fucking silence of the lambs you yeah. know, like you can tell you look into his eyes, you're like, there's something evil in that boy. He's just like a fucking moron. Yeah. Um oh, man. But there's there's so many things, dude. There's fucking blood evidence and burned bodies and cars on his property, and then yeah. you realize how it all could have been planted, and then the fucking someone confesses that was a part of it, but you find out that he's got like sixty two IQ. It's like his nephew or whatever, and then he you know, you you then realize like, oh, that was totally coaxed out of him. Yeah. The confession was a false confession, and yeah, it's fucked. I can't well, wait to see how fucked you are after watching. <laughs> I can't wait to see how excited you are watching American Vandal. I'm stoked. It looks good. It's it's funny. Um, yeah. <sighs> so we have our homework. We got our homework. Um, I am almost done editing my uh the second of three mario videos oh um, nice oh yeah happy, you hit you hit the I'm, sub 20 i'm happy to announce i find spoiler alert i i fucking Woo! it took 843 i think was the number Jesus. attempts the best part is that while i'm editing this video i can see like i got from like an hour and a half it was like an hour and 40 minutes down to like 26 minutes in like 120 runs and then, like, in another 100 runs, I got down to, like, 20 minutes and 20 seconds. And then it took 700 runs to get 20 seconds off. It was, like... <sighs> That's crazy. And it's, like... Not not because I'm... If you were more clutch than me, I'm like, yeah, sure. If you were better than me, yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah, sure. But still, it's, like, it's fucking harder than you'd think. Oh, uh, dude, it's I, just harder than you think. I don't doubt that for a second, bro. I don't doubt that for a second. Do you know what you're gonna move on to after you like finish the videos? You you've hit the PB, you hit your goal. You know what I was playing the other day, and I'm and I'm, I kind of have a hand. I tried a bunch of games. I'm not sure, but I want to speed run yet. Um, but uh, did you ever play on? What the fuck was the name of that website? Miniclip.com. Oh, yeah. Did you ever play Trials? Mm, maybe. 
that motocross where you could just oh yeah 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 lean forward and backward and it was like so there's a hundred like percent a more modern PC version that I I'm, I've been playing, and it's like it's super fucking addicting. And the best part is like you can press a button and like just instantly start over. So if you like, if you like the first thing you have to do on the first fucking level is like wheelie so that when you hit a ramp you want to like mm. actually have it hit the back wheel and then front flip because that like actually oh, sets you yeah. up for okay. like the ramp it's totally not what you would like think um yeah but you can actually watch like all of the recordings for the entire like leaderboard of you know and, and i did like a normal decent run through of it and i'm like eight hundred forty seven thousandth in the world and then i like shaved off like three seconds and it's like you're now 827th it's like holy <laughs> shit um but uh it's just super addicting so like if you if you hit the wrong thing two seconds in you just hit a button you start over so like you can oh. really grind and practice it's almost like the equivalent of a practice rom because the levels are so short and you can restart yeah. them at checkpoints and whatever so i don't know i, I might give it a try I, I might that's I, so funny it's such a meme too the best yeah. part is that like the I kept breaking the game in a very specific way that was fucking hilarious where I was doing like a front flip and my back wheel, you know, like a dirt bike has the swing arm. Yeah. Where the back wheel is connected. It's almost like yeah, a free floating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be front flipping. So what would happen is that the back wheel would be like coming down <laughs> at like a certain angle to where it would end up folding so that both <laughs> wheels were in the front. And then, like, you can just kind of lean, and the oh physics are just God. just fucked enough where, like, the bike is folded in half, and you're just like, oh my! And I'm just fucking, I'm just sitting there, like, just giggling. It's 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 so much, it's so much fun just seeing the Jeez. rag dolls and everything. Even when you fail, it's, it's yeah, pretty fucking funny. So I don't know who knows. Um, yeah, I, I need I need something. Honestly, Mario was way better than I ever expected. Yeah, speed running to be, but I don't want to play it. I like I want to keep playing it. But I don't want to like play it seriously, like yeah. Because what other goal? I could say nineteen minutes, but then I'm just yeah. then I'm I'm just punishing myself hitting an arbitrary goal. Like the only goal that makes sense to where I yeah. think it would be worth punishing myself is the world record, and that's five years of punishing myself. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? nonstop. So it's like, <laughs> like so it's like I don't want to fucking play it because if you're if you're speed running yeah. something and you're not trying to like improve like yep. hugely and like kind of what's the point so i don't know it's a little bit weird like i want to play it but i For also sure. like don't want to play it maybe i'll just yeah. like race aqua all, all, like twice a week or something and <laughs> yeah I, that's what i was gonna say i was like are there any games that you want to play for not punishment you know what i mean like just for video game's sake like because you've been you've been doing tarkov as punishment and then you you found like it's not new, even punishment. It's boring you, to me. Yeah, you found new joy in this speedrunning thing where you pick a game and then you hate yourself until you accomplish this goal and it's amazing and dope. But like, is there anything? I hate that myself, you, but at the same time, I also love the fuck out of it. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, so I I, I want to find another game to speedrun. Yeah. Because then it, that engages like the competitive aspect and the yeah. mental aspect of like I'm I'm constantly for two months I'm solving a puzzle. Yeah, it's a perfect the perfect amount of like fun, but also challenge and yeah. competition, but only with yourself, so it doesn't get weird. Like yeah, no, I get it. I I I, I don't know. I can't come up with anything that is going to be as like addicting and exciting movement wise. Yeah, and, and my video that I'm finished, uh, going to be finishing probably tomorrow, uh, the second Mario episode. It talks about, it talks about movement, and like everybody talks about movement in Tarkov and like how it's important and stuff. But like, yeah. it's a, just a different. Yeah, I, I, I equate it in my video to like being an F1 race car driver. Mm. Like it, it's it's the only way. Like when you see somebody racing and ta taking the perfect lines and coming inches from the fucking curb and like knowing, but then also knowing how to like take the curve if there's someone you want to pass or prevent, like yep. it's the same kind of aspects, except Mario is in three dimensions and there's platforming and, and enemies that will try to kill you. Yeah. So it's like even more of a skill ceiling. Yeah. But, but now that I like have gotten to, you know, quote unquote, the next level, which is still, you know, amateur. Yeah. Um, it just. I'm playing Mario and it feels like I'm driving. 
Mm. It's, it's, it, it, it doesn't feel like I'm playing a platformer where it's jump, 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 yeah. jump. It feels like turn at this angle and pump the brakes because you let off on the stick just a little bit. And Interesting. Then you jump. It's, yeah. It really is a lot like racing. Um, That's so cool. That On that note, one of the things I might be doing um if i can't get a company to like send me like three thousand dollars worth of shit um i i really i really want to get one of those uh like seat steering wheel pedal oh, yeah. setups for for vr because i feel like vr racing would be fucking awesome oh, and i want to do sim sick. racing i don't want to i don't want to play like mario kart i mean those, those are fun but yeah. like i want to play one of my favorite games of all time is gran turismo 3 on playstation yeah 2. um I just love the like realistic physics and the realistic graphics. And I, I would love to, I feel like that's the closest I'll ever get to learning how to drive properly. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, like, I mean, I, you know, I, like, I, I've done amateur racing before, whether it was um, like on motorcycles or motocross. Um, but like, it's just another level, right? Like I, I feel like yeah. that would kind of be cool to maybe look into speed running I don't even know if they have like I don't even know what games I, I know that there's a few like a Seto Corsa there's a, like Italian yeah. name that the games look fucking unreal um, yeah. that I feel like it would be kind of sick to like grind a race to the point Bro. where like you get a, a lap record like that kind of seems like a cool if you if you want to get in the right headspace put it on your watch list uh, there's a it's got three seasons now. It's a Netflix original documentary series called Drive to Survive, and it's about Formula One racing, and it's good. It's good. Drive to Survive, yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I, apparently, uh, like Anton and Warren, um, yeah. they, both, they both have done... So, like, Warren hit me up um, recently um, and sent me some pictures of some of the shit he had, but it looks like it's going to be like two to four grand for... Yeah. And see, the I thing know Anton is that, did like, that too, yeah. I hate... I hate when people are like, oh, you don't want to go like crazy. You want to get the thing is, is that what happens is there's two there's two outcomes to me wanting to get into something new. Yeah. If I get the budget thing, sometimes it doesn't live up to like what I picture in my head. Yeah. So I lose interest or I instantly am like, I need to upgrade. And then now I just bought four hundred dollars worth of shit. Yep. And then I go spend two thousand when it would have been I could have just spent two thousand. I'm the same way. I am the same way, dude. I play Star Citizen twice a year for one week each, and I bought four hundred dollar flight six because I didn't want to buy the sixty dollar ones because of all the reviews and all of this and all of that. And I was like, dude, if I want to get into it, I want to get into it. I want to have the right thing. I know I'm gonna play that game a lot once it gets more. Like, I'm the same way, dude. It's not about it's not about just like wanting to spend money because you have the money to spend. It's exactly that. It's like I want my experience to be at the level that I want it to be. And, and, and if I cut corners and, and go budget, then I have so much potential to mess things up and then have to spend more money or wish I'd spent more money and then be frustrated that I didn't. Like, Yeah, the, yeah. Budget, the budget can be more expensive. This is what happened when I got a guitar. I bought an $80 guitar. And then I'm like, I'm better than this. And I bought a $300 guitar. And then a month later, I'm like, I'm better than this. And I bought a $600 guitar. I'm like, Pfft. and every time I sold it for 60% of what I paid for it. Yes. When it's like, if I had, you know, I mean, it would have been crazy for me to buy the, you know, $4,000 PRS at the beginning. But yeah. everything was always a budget version of the thing I wanted. I wanted yeah. an Ibanez gem so I could be like Steve Vai. So what I ended up doing was, you know, they have the, it has like the cool inlays. Mm -hmm. What I ended up buying a cheap Ibanez, um, like RG, because it was like basically a gem, but the two hundred dollar version, so it yeah. played like shit. It sounded like shit, and then I ended up buying like a move up and up and up until I got like the eight hundred dollar Schecter, but only because it was nice guitar, yeah. but only because it had cool inlays, like kind yeah. of like Vi's yeah. guitar, but it's nothing like the guitar, and it was like I, I, I've never been happy. When I wanted to settle for something, yep, that was not quite exactly what I wanted. And 100%. there have been plenty of times where I've dropped money on things. And I mean, you could even say this about my fucking VR. Although I might be turning that around, I went and bought the Index and I used it for three hours, and it's been sitting there for three months, and I haven't touched it. Yeah. But then again, now I have it. So 
you know, for the rest of my life, I mean, it's going to be obsolete in no time, but still it's like, I have it. Yep. So as long as, as long as I can afford to, you know, it's not the end of the world. I didn't need that money for my mortgage. Then I'll always yeah. have that thing yeah. to go back to. It's always an option. I'll never be fucking bored. You know, dude, I had a Schecter. Uh, I had a Schecter Tempest. Those are nice, man. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, for sure. It just wasn't a gem. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And not, it's not even to say that like a gem is better. It's just no, like. No, it's just that's what you wanted for it was whatever reason. Yeah. Like, I totally get it. It's like I, buying a Porsche, the nine, not 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 the 914 or the 928, but there's like the cheapo Porsche. Fucking what what model Porsche? Um, I know nothing about cars. Well, I forget which one it is. 9. 28. It might be the 928. Yeah, they made it from 97 to 95. I don't know. Anyway, it was like a cheapo Porsche that's like, it looks ugly, but it's like, it's a Porsche. It's a Porsche. You know, like, yeah. I would be the one to buy that thing because I wanted a Porsche and then be like, it's not a good Porsche. It's just, but it's more expensive than like a nice Civic. So yep. it's like, I settled for something. I would have been better going completely different yep. or just buying like a fucking forty thousand dollar nine eleven, which I'm glad I never did. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, I I I get it. I get it. Yeah, the racing thing could be cool. Be cool. Yeah, I know uh Anton did that too and Warren did that. Yeah. I don't know. I've been I've been like vibing like I just want I want like another game to like sink myself into, not to like leave Cyberpunk's Tarkov. on sale. So I, I bought Cyberpunk the day it came out, unfortunately. I played for two hours and haven't opened it since. Um longer than I did. Yeah. I've been I've been interested. We don't have we won't get into it because it's already been a long time, but like I was really looking forward to I wanna like I think I want to play an MMO. I've never played an MMO because I was never a PC gamer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I played RuneScape on my friend's laptop for a little bit, and it was I remember as a kid being like give me your laptop. Like I want to play this game. And then I was a console Andy for forever. And it's way too late to get into World of Warcraft. No matter what the World of Warcraft fanboys tell me, I cannot start something that's 19 years old. I just can't do it. Like I'm just not going to do it. Like people are like, dude, you should play Final Fantasy 19. Yeah. I'm like, I Six, never played the first 18. I'm not yeah. getting into it now. 600,000 you know, like 600, hours of content that I'm behind on. I'm not going to start it. And so I was really excited for New World, which was uh, Amazon is publishing. So Amazon, so like Amazon has an engine, a game engine called Lumberyard that not many people know about. The fuck? Yeah. And like Star Citizen, like five, six years ago, moved over to Lumberyard. Like Star Citizen is like the most ambitious video game project ever in existence. And it's on Lumberyard. And... Amazon has been working on this MMO for a long time, like way back in the day, like Deadly and a bunch of people played like an early alpha where it played more like Rust and they like scrapped the project and, and moved it completely into MMO. Last year, there was an open beta. I watched Sequisha play this game for like 30 hours. It looks fun. And uh, it's coming out in August. But yeah. there's been a whole lot of drama about it because it's Amazon. And they're, so they've already started talking about how they're going to monetize it. And it, heaven gonna, forbid a company monetizes. Anything. They're going to, they're going to no, but they're going to like, they're going to monetize. They're going to Amazon monetize it. Like before the game is even out they're like, like the big thing is they've talked about like they're, they're going to sell quality of life improvements and everybody's like, your game's not out. Just make it better. Don't make it bad. And then sell us quality of life improvements. Wait, are they, that's like selling bug fixes. Okay. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, <laughs> dude, that quality of life. They're talking. They're talking about selling boosts to max level before the game is out. Like there's been a whole lot of drama on it. So, but that's the game that I was looking forward to because I just I think I want to just like play something different. Like I want to like I'm, I'm in Tarkov for the long haul, but just like based on what we think is going to happen this year, I was like, I you know, play a little Apex, a little Warzone, just like. You know, Star Citizen, nothing has gotten me wanting to play it like consistency consistently or a lot. So I was like, man, maybe an MMO would be dope, but it's been Well, let me know if you could find anything. I've I've never really gotten into any MMOs before, but that's because I've just always been fucking way late to the game. Yeah, exactly. Well that's so maybe, exactly. maybe something new. I was like, dude, this could it could be super exciting to get 
in the beginning of something. You know what I mean? Because all the MMOs, all the best ones at least, are like Titans. You know what I mean? RuneScape, which came out when I was 12. You know, World of Warcraft, which came out. So it's like, man, I want to I want to be on the wave of something new. But yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people, Ashes of Creation is the other one, the other MMO, mm -hmm. but that just looks like it's not going to come out for like two or three more years. But Oh, really? Yeah. That one, that that's like the people's... What's happening to that game is what was happening to Cyberpunk. The hype is transcending, like because that was like the like the, the whole story about that. That's like the people's MMO. Like this guy, like basically funded the project solo, just like put all the money into it to start, and then they started opening it up for pre-orders, and it's all like, it looks amazing. It looks like, you know, a you know by the people for the people MMO, but it's just it's got a long way to go. So, but yeah, um. But yeah, I everything think that, sucks and humanity's doomed and there's nothing good out there. Be cynical, but yeah. unless you're in the woods and you hear the bush rustles, then don't be cynical. Just run away. Well, no, be cynical, but don't be skeptical. Yeah. But but do be skeptical. But be skeptical more often but, than you think you should, but not always. But if I'm supposed to be skeptical, then if you tell me to be skeptical, I'm not going to believe you. Okay, well, if you're actually fucking skeptical and you actually use logic and reason, and I say don't believe me, come to your own conclusion, you'll come to the same conclusion. <laughs> yeah. You cock. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you guys for coming out to the fucking... Thanks, cocks. <laughs> I love oh. you guys. Thanks for the love on the fucking videos and everything, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Seriously. Um... I will get this episode out before next Thursday. <laughs> I apologize. But we are excited about this whole kind of expansion into actually talking about the progress things in life. So it's cool that we are talking about stuff that each other should get into. We kind of just like stumbled into this with the whole DJ Peach Cobbler and Dark and all that stuff that we just started talking about. It ended up being really cool. And so we're excited to make this a part of it and to bring you guys along. So yeah, the the we're gonna put the link to our anchor site in uh, in the show notes. Whether you're listening to it on a podcast platform or on YouTube, and then send us those messages with stuff with two things: a anything you want us to check out, and b let us know if you think Balloon Boy, his dad was innocent or guilty. And uh, and yeah, so thank you guys for hanging. Um, it's a weekly show. We'll have this up. I'll have this up earlier next week. This week was kind of crazy. And uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming in the works. So thanks for hanging with us and we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Call.